Welcome back, everyone, to Profila Binding's Shoe Reviews. And for this episode, I would like to talk about the olive version of the Strandmok shoe made on the 65 last. In my humble opinion, this is one of the best casual designs that Alan Edmonds has ever created. And while it will be too loud for some, I personally think it's one of the best shoes to pair with jeans. Now there's a lot of things I love about this shoe and I'll be going over these, as well as a few of the mild concerns. There have been many versions of the Strandmok shoe over the years, but for this video I'm just talking about this olive version which was made sometime around 2015. Now firstly, I want to mention the leather. I've never been able to confirm what kind of leather this is exactly. I do have another pair of Rothsay shoes that are in an olive nubuck leather, and it's very different than this. But if you read on some sources, it tells you this is also nubuck leather. So I'm not sure which type it is. It could be a type of calf leather in olive or possibly nubuck, but I'm not sure. The Olive Rush Street was a very similar shoe that preceded this model and used the exact same olive leather, but there are several differences between the two models. Anyway, I'd like to point out that this leather is very soft and easy to walk in and definitely not stiff. The next thing I want to mention is that the shoe is almost entirely unlined, and this is a big difference between the Strandmok and the Rush Street. There is a little bit of lining in the heel, but that's about it. One of the big benefits to having an unlined shoe like this is that it's easy to wear in high heat, making it a good shoe for the summer. Also, because of the lack of lining, the fit is going to be larger. I recommend starting with your usual size for this model, and then prepare to size down a half size if needed. This is a lot different than the Rush Street, where most people would stay with their normal size and possibly even go up a width, because the fit of the Rush Street is more similar to the Strand. One other little detail I'll mention is that the binding at the top is a very nicely done Profila binding instead of the usual piping that they use on the shoes. Uh, some shoes, the Profila binding does not turn out so well, but in this model they got it right. I mean, just look at it. It's fine. The insole is the same kind of pour-on insole that they use on the Higgins Mill boot. I find it's a very nice balance of being forgiving while not being too cushiony. It's not the same kind of insole you're going to find in the LaSalle or the Wilbert models. It's thinner than that, it's flatter, but it has a nice feel to it. The standard sole that comes with these is day-night which is probably my favorite rubber option. But to be clear, I almost always prefer leather over rubber. And while it's true, like for me, day-night is not as comfortable as leather, I still find it's probably the best option I've discovered so far when it's raining. It's just more supportive than other rubber soles that I've tried, and that's why it's so popular with a lot of shoe creators in America and England, because it works well as being supportive and also good for rain. But to be clear, there's a lot of men that can't stand day-night, and I understand where they're coming from, but this is, you know, it's a compromise. Speaking of the sole, one subtle but important difference with this model is that it uses a reverse welt, whereas the Rush Street used a regular welt. This makes the sole a little bit larger, and this is what AE intended to do because they were going for a sturdier type of shoe. I personally would not have done this for this model, as I would prefer a regular welt, and I'll give you my reason. The reverse welt makes the sole heavier because it's going to end up being larger. And when you combine this uh, heavy sole with a lightweight upper, which is mostly unlined, it's going to create a somewhat unbalanced feel to the shoe. This probably won't bother most people, but it's just something to be aware of. You'll notice this is not the day-night sole that I have. I had Alan Edmonds put on a regular leather sole to make them more light. It did help with the weight of the sole, but unfortunately it did not resolve the size issue and these are still too long for me. As a result, I'm heartbroken to say that this one is being sold to another person. He knows who he is and I hope he enjoys these and I hope they fit him better than me. But because I'm about to ship out this shoe, I wanted to do a quick review while it's still possible, because I don't know if I'll ever get my hands on one of these again. 
This is a size eight and a half, and I can wear a Park Ave and a Strand in this size, but unfortunately this model just doesn't work. I would have to size down for this. I'll finish up by saying this is an awesome shoe, and if you can actually find one, definitely jump on it. I really hope AE brings this back in all of in the future, as they currently have other models of this shoe in the grain leather, but those are not very appealing to me. Uh, this olive version is probably my favorite casual shoe that they've created in, in the last five years, but I wasn't smart enough to buy these in the right size when they were around. So anyway, despite these small concerns I mentioned, I still think this is a great shoe. Five stars out of five. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.